everyone welcome back to the channel my name is Tom, and today i am building another shell challenge but before i continue i just want to say i am so sorry for almost disappearing off the face of the earth you know little oops on my part but i sort of fell into an abrupt slump and with finals week coming up very soon for me as in tomorrow i didn't really have much energy to record or build anything but i am back now with another show challenge like i mentioned and it's just to sort of ease my way back into the routine of things although i can promise that i will have two builds up next week so hopefully this is like enough for us to well mainly for me to like i said ease myself back into things so today's shell challenge is originally created by laura bbyx as usual i will link their channel and their instagram post if you want to give them a follow which you should because they make such large and gorgeous family homes kind of the opposite of what i do but you know there's a lot of variety when it comes to the building community so last time I posted a shell challenge, I think I forgot to tell you guys the rules. So the general rules goes as follows. Don't change any exterior walls. You can add interior walls and half walls, but the extra rule that she decided to add for this one is that it must stay a tiny home. And since I decided to add a couple platformers for the entrance and the back entrance, um, the tile count was really really something i had to worry about but you know thankfully when i first downloaded the lot it was i think a tier 2 tiny home so i had some wiggle room and i think in the end it came out to be a tier 1 if, th if that's the the lot or if that's the lot size that allows for 100 tiles um because i think this was about maybe 80 maybe 70 ish tiles so yeah um, right now, I am working on landscaping. Because I am building this in Copperdale, I went into the debug and started grabbing anything that I thought looked similar to the environment. So I grabbed some grass and kind of placed maybe three or four around the lot, just so it kind of blends in with all the grass in the surrounding areas. And of course, I had to get matching flowers too. And this sort of landscaping, it's kind of a bit of a cop-out because of how big the debug items were but to be fair you know i think it adds some dimension that is very much needed when it comes to blending out these lots into the exteriors um sorry not the exteriors the background uh but yeah and as for the fence i will say that i initially used a base game fence just because it seemed like something that would sort of fit with the vibes that i was going for but then I saw this wall decal, maybe not a decal, but I saw a hedge in the debug catalog and I decided to line the backyard space with that instead of an actual fence. And you know, I think it looks kind of nice. I think I remember hearing someone say it looks similar to an actual fence we have, which comes with one of the stuff packs, I think. But yeah, so right now I am just filling in these little lots of greenery just so there's more color to the build because right now the colors are very much beige or like a really pale brown and the roof is blue but i don't really think you can see it from where we are right now um and you know initially i wanted this house to be sort of like a 70s or 60s pink house like a bright pink house but then i decided i haven't really build anything that is a different roof style so i thought i could use that blue roof with this sort of plain wallpaper that you know i think it looks nice on the eyes and as for the windows and the doors i am using a mix of the base game windows as well as the new doors and windows that came from the new kit which is called greenhouse haven um i think it was released maybe two weeks ago maybe three weeks ago i want to say two weeks ago and you know i didn't really expect to use those new items for this build but i really wanted to get a lot of sunlight into the whole house and so that's why you see me using those giant windows on both the front and the back and on the side i'm just using some simple windows 
right here I am currently decorating the walls with debug ivy which I believe comes from discover university I don't know what spurred that on but I guess I just thought that the exterior seemed a bit too plain because the wallpaper is very very uniform and it's just really a solid color and you know in a house like this I thought it would be kind of fitting because I imagine this sim that would be living here or renting this lot to be a gardener of some sort or they're just really into plants and nature and I guess that explains why they have a tiny house and a very spacious backyard but yeah right now i am finally working on the interior and as you can see there is really not a lot of room but thankfully i was able to squish i think all of the living area in the first floor and then on the second floor i was able to fit a double bed and a three tile bathroom and you know thank god for discover university and their showers um i know snowy escape has one that is a little bit more expensive and probably looks better and has higher stats but I don't have that pack so Discover University is just gonna have to cut it for today um, but yeah I was able to fit a three tile bathroom um, oh and speaking of the bathroom that is three tiles I did play test this build but I wouldn't label it as completely playable I don't know if it's a problem with the mods that I had installed, which weren't like CC mods, they were script mods, I think. It was just tool mod and UI cheats and MC command center. But I ran into a bug where my sim would not throw away their food or clean up a mixing bowl. Like I I tested this multiple times, but they kept picking up their dish and putting it back down either on the counter or the table and I assume that it would probably be due to the trash can or the fact that it had a a bar height table but no it just it just wouldn't go away so um I did post this on the gallery with a warning that it wasn't I wouldn't consider it um completely functional or not really play tested but I really wanted to post it because I am sort of proud of the exterior and hopefully you like it as well. Uh, but yeah, I it's on the gallery under my ID Ktom, C-A-I-T-O-M. I will also be linking down the tray files because I did post them a little early. But yeah, the kitchen is pretty simple. It is a three by three tile. Um, I believe it's what you call a galley kitchen when there are counters facing opposite of each other. I think the kitchen works. Uh, the fridge was play testable. I mean, was playable be even despite the clutter I decided to include on top of it, as well as the stove and the sink. And right here, I was getting some rugs down just to kind of figure out how the layout would be once I placed the dining table and the lounge area or the family room, living room. Um, but yeah, as soon as you walk in, you sort of walk into the whole living room and, you know, I don't know how realistic that is, but when it came to spacing out or dividing the spaces of the living area, this just seemed to make the most sense to me, mainly because it had a wall for me to place a console table and to place the TV on, which I will say does function. To be honest, I wasn't really expecting it to function because it wasn't slotted to any of the slots on this console table that I'm using, but you know, gladly it works. And it is on the cheaper side, but you know, I was considering using the new TV that came with Basement Treasures just because it's a bit more retro. And I guess I imagine the sim here, the sim that is living here to be a bit more down to earth because they like to garden. But, you know, I gave them a small flat screen TV. And about those poofs, those tiny living poofs I place um, in front of the console. So when I was playtesting this, I had my sim invite some people over or I just let them welcome the welcome wagon inside just so I could see how playable it was with other sims on the lot. And they kept leaving their dirty dishes on there, so I got rid of those. I feel like it would be a bit of a hassle, you know, with your sim not being able to actually throw things away and having to scour the whole place just to look for dirty dishes. 
and so I just kind of delete those. I don't know if I replace it with anything or if I replace it with actual, um, they're not utans. I'm sorry. I forgot the word for that, but actual little pillow seats that came from City Living. But you know, we can just see in the end. So right here, I am finally working on the second floor. As you probably noticed, I tried to make it a balcony or not a balcony, a a lofted area, but with the way that the curtain hung on both of the windows on different levels, I didn't like that. And also, I didn't know if I had enough room to include a functional bathroom, despite me planning to make it three tiles. So I decided to just leave it open. The whole area contains a double bed, a desk space, which is made of, I think, three parenthood one tile desks, by the way. Um, there's like a little storage area just because I think that the sim that wants to get away from their busy life has a bunch of stuff here for storage. Just something they don't have to see in their main living area or their main house. So right now I'm cluttering up the side tables which I am kind of surprised at how nice it looks. I'm using these dream home decorator side tables in addition to the new um the new bed and rug that came with growing together which was the most recent released ep you know by the way and um i didn't really think much about the clutter i just kind of got what i thought would fit on the side and just kind of placed them together and i also included a post board a postcard board but I didn't place any postcards. I actually went ahead and included some parenthood debug notes that are usually hang, I want to say on the little calendar item or the bedtime item that comes with parenthood. You know, I didn't add too many. I just added three. I thought it was nice. You know, they, they write little memos to themselves and whatnot. And as for the desk base, it is functional, by the way. Your Sims can do all that they need to do with their little laptop because like I said the sim they have a main house and this is just something they have on the side which if you have a setup like this um kind of jealous because you know most people I know usually have one house but we can just say it's like a rental of some sort um but yeah and as for the curtains I will say that I do end up changing them to the same curtains that are in the first floor which are the sheer high school years curtains just because i thought these cottage living ones seemed sort of out of place in my opinion um and of course i had to include the new luggages that came from growing together because you know to reinforce the idea that this sim does not live here permanently it is a rental for them but you know, of course, if your sim wants to live here, go ahead. Honestly, it's kind of a nice place. And oh, speaking of, this house was decorated for a maximum of two sims. There's really not much room to include any other sleeping areas unless you want to have your guests sleep in a tent outside. But I'm not sure how keen they're going to be on sleeping somewhere that doesn't really have a solid roof. But, you know, we can stop talking about that and resume talking about the build. So, I just want to say that the gallery thumbnail um, for this build in particular is a view from the side of the house. And, you know, it's a little off-putting at first. You don't really get to see the whole beauty of it. But it's because I'm building this on La Sully Point in Copperdale. And it's a 20 by 15 lot that I think runs horizontally rather than the regular vertical way that lots usually are. And you know, I would be perfectly fine building this on a different lot, but I kind of like the vibes around here. I was considering building it on the other small lot that's surrounded by trees in Copperdale, but it seemed a bit too naturey and something that would fit a cabin rather than this sort of Mediterranean, Italian looking house. Uh, but you know, that's just my opinion. 
So right after we finish this little storage corner area, we can finally start working on the backyard, which looking back on it now, seems to be about half pool, half actual functional area. Um, so hopefully that's not too much of an issue. So in the backyard, like I said, there is a pool. I include maybe two big planter boxes and then maybe like three individual planters. Um, I think I also included a grill somewhere in the build, maybe. I'm not too sure about it, but I of course had to include a lounge chair and some sort of outdoor seating. Just because, you know, if you're someone who likes to garden, then probably you enjoy some time out in the sun, just letting the nature soak into your skin or whatever. Um, I also placed a bike from Discover University. I think your sim can't get on it like when it's sitting along those hedges, but you know, thankfully you can just drag it to your sim's inventory or just somewhere open on the lot and have them ride around. But with that, we are pretty much done with the build. As always, thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video and would like to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out the Discord if you haven't already. Of course, if you want to download this lot, you can find it on the gallery under my ID, Ktom. Thank you again for chatting with me, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.